In this video, we're going to see how to determine the overall polarity of the uh, molecule based on the polarity of the bonds inside the molecule. So as we saw in the previous video, you can calculate the polarity of individual bonds like you see here, but the individual polarity of one bond does not tell you what the overall molecule is. To do that, you need to consider all the bonds in the molecule plus the shape of the molecules as well. Um, so a polar molecule is going to be a molecule with an overall dipole moment, a net dipole moment. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at a couple examples, a couple of images here that will clarify that for us. So here we have carbon dioxide, uh, CO2. And what you'll notice is that there's two bonds. There's a CO bond there and a CO bond over here. And so if you were to draw one of the bonds out like this, um, you would make your arrow going towards the oxygen because, well, it's um, uh, more electronegative than the carbon. And so there's a partial negative there and a partial positive here. But what you'd also need to realize is that there's a, in the molecule, there's another bond going in the other direction as well. And um, that's pulling in the opposite direction, but with the same force. So overall, because they're going in the opposite direction with the same force, um, the dipoles are going to cancel out. And so in this one, there's no net overall dipole. A net a dipole moment is really um, within a molecule. Um, overall, when you put all the dipoles together, what happens to it? Is there an overall one or is um, or do they cancel out? Um, and so essentially you can add these arrows up. And these arrows um, you'll learn later on, these arrows are called vectors. So they're, they're called dipole vectors, as we saw in a previous video, but vectors, and you can basically add them up, and uh, they can cancel out if you're going in opposite directions, uh, with the same strength, of course. So if we look at uh, BEF2, beryllium fluoride here, these are going in the opposite direction with the same force, because these are the same atoms on both sides. So they cancel out, um, and so there's no net dipole. And so um, overall, even though this is a polar bond, and this is a polar bond, they're both polar bonds, polar bond, the, uh, they cancel out and there's no net dipole, so the molecule is a non-polar molecule. Same thing with carbon dioxide. So even though there's a polar bond here and a polar bond here, these are bond dipoles, the net dipole cancels out because they're going in the opposite direction with the same strength. So this is a non-polar molecule as well non-polar molecule. So you can have molecules that have polar bonds and end up being non-polar because, again, the dipole vectors cancel out. But let's take a look at something like water. Here, the vectors, you have partial positive here, partial positive here, oxygen is partially negative. The vectors don't cancel out because they're not going in opposite directions. They're going in directions that are not opposite. And when you add them up, there is an overall dipole. It's this arrow over here. Um, so essentially what it means is that overall more than negative charge is concentrated towards this oxygen bit of the molecule. So the molecule is polarized. Um, the spread of the negative charge or the electron density is not evenly distributed throughout the molecule like it would be in something where there is no net dipole. So here there is a net dipole moment. Um, and that's called the molecular dipole. So the molecular dipole is really just um, your overall dipole from the individual bond dipoles. Um, and so water has an overall dipole moment, which means that water is a polar, polar molecule. So we can figure out if dipoles will cancel out based on the shape of the molecule. And we'll take a look at that. So using Vesper theory, we can draw our, our molecules out and see if the vectors will cancel out or not. If the vectors cancel out, well, what that means is our molecule is nonpolar. If they don't cancel out, what that means is our molecule is polar. So let's just take a look at a few examples um, and then we'll, uh, we'll be able to predict if we have uh, a polar molecule or a nonpolar molecule. So again, carbon dioxide has polar bonds, but it is a nonpolar molecule. And again, that's because the, the bond dipoles are equal and opposite, and they cancel each other out. So carbon dioxide doesn't have a net molecular dipole. It doesn't have a net dipole moment. So 
let's take a look at a few molecules here. What we're going to do is we're going to draw out their um, Lewis dot structures first. And so we're going to use the same rules we typically use for drawing Lewis structures. And if you don't remember that, you can go back and look at our previous videos and our previous lessons. And then uh, we have like that. Um, so I didn't do the Vesper shapes really. I mean, um, in reality, I sort of did that here, but uh, it's okay if you didn't. Uh, but we are going to lead to, we're going to try to figure out if these are polar or not using their Vesper shapes. But right now we just want to find the electronegativity difference of the individual bonds. So we know that this one here, the electronegativity difference is, uh, so delta En for the CH bond, for the CH bond, let's try that again, is 2.5 minus 2.1 which is 0 0.4. So we have 0 0.4 here, 0 0.4 over here, because they're the same bonds. So those are the nonpolar bonds in the molecule. But we also have a CO bond. So for the CO bond, the delta En for CO is equal to uh, 3.5 minus 2.5, which is 1.0, and that means that that's polar. So this is 1.0. So this bond is polar. So we have two nonpolar bonds, right? These are nonpolar. And we have a polar bond in this molecule. And somehow knowing the shape, we need to predict, we'll be able to predict if the entire molecule overall is um, polar or nonpolar considering the shape and all the bonds there. Keep in mind that you would have a dipole moment um, for at least one of the bonds. And so it's a partial negative here and our partial positive on the carbon there. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for our, um, our CCL4 molecule. They're all the same bonds luckily, so we're just doing the um, delta En is um, for carbon is, so chlorine is 3.0 minus 2.5 for carbon. And we get 0 0.5. So that means that all those bonds in here are polar. These are all polar bonds. Um, and so all our arrows are going like this with the partial positive where the um, carbon is and partial negative where the uh, chlorines are. And so you could draw that for all your bonds that you have. Partial negative there. Partial negative there. Now, we can do the same thing here. Um, so we already did it in the previous examples with CH. If you want to find the delta EN for CH, we saw that it was 0 0.4. So we have a non polar bond, and uh, for CL, CCL, we saw that it was uh, 0 0.5, so all these here are polar bonds. And so you could go ahead and draw your dipoles where they exist. Now I'm not confirming if these molecules are polar or nonpolar at the moment. Um, all I'm doing is illustrating um, that there are dipoles right now, and we're gonna see if those dipoles cancel out or not using the steps that we see below. So if you look over here, we're gonna determine um, if molecules are polar or nonpolar using Vesper theory.